Hi everyone! In this new year, if you're able, please consider becoming a sustaining donor to Glass Tire. Your monthly gift will help our nonprofit publication cover all of the artists and organizations that make up our state. You can become a sustaining donor or make a one time gift at glasstire.com forward slash donate. Also, if you like our podcast, please consider subscribing to us and leaving us a rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, and welcome to this week's Art Dirt, our podcast where we talk about topical art topics. My name is Christopher Blay, and this week I interview Bill and Pam Campbell. The couple recently announced that after 46 years of running the William Campbell Contemporary Art in Fort Worth, they're retiring. The new owners are Fort Worth Contemporary Art Partners, who include Jad Spate, Clayton Snodgrass, Tim Locke, J.W. Wilson, and Peeler Howell, the William Campbell Gallery Manager, for close to four years. I sat down with the Campbells to talk the early days of the gallery in 1974 and the many transitions, friendships, and exhibitions they've experienced over the nearly five decades running of one of the oldest galleries in Texas. Pam Bell, hello. Thank you. (laughs) Hello, how are you? Welcome back to Fort Worth. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to be here. And the reason I'm here is because you just announced to the world that you will be stepping down from your role as owners of the William Campbell Contemporary. So we wanted to talk with you about that. I'm sort of uh, dubbing this an exit interview because (laughs) you are, the gallery remains, you're stepping away. Uh, First of all, just tell me about the origins of this space. When did it begin? What is the story of the William Campbell Gallery? Well, we were established in 1974, not in this building. We were in another space on Camp Bowie for seven years. It was a strip center, if you will. And we bought this building in 1981 and moved over here. Uh, Been here ever since and tried to upgrade the building as much as we could. It's an old over and under duplex. So we took all the non-structural walls out and uh, tried to open it up as much as possible. But it had been a commercial space for many years before we even bought the building. Yeah, it was a design studio and a dress shop and a and it had been a number skin of care spaces. salon. <laughs> and the building was actually built in the forties. Yeah. yeah, so it's an old building, but it's it's worked very well. Did it start out as the William Campbell Gallery, or did it have a different name? Well, when we were in camp. On Camp Bowie, in the smaller space, it was called Gallery One Frames, or Gallery One, rather. And there was a frame shop component to it in the same building. Uh, When we bought this building is when we incorporated under William Campbell, and we kept the Gallery One as a frame shop and added a building behind for it. So customers could go there or here, but they didn't have to walk through one space to get to the other. Yeah. Yeah. So 46 Six years, years in the business, Right. That's, uh, that's more than most can say. Well, we've been very lucky. Yeah, <laughs> and it's been wonderful. Yeah. Well, when we first started out, um, I have a graduate, I mean, a, a degree from TCU, and I had been gone from TCU about four years, five years. I worked in uh, different advertising agencies in Dallas when I got out of the Army. Uh, and, and the business I worked for at that time, there was a recession in 1973, uh, laid off all the employees because business was that bad. And that's when we bought the uh, gallery frame shop that was over here. Uh, I am from Fort Worth and Pam went to TCU and had lived here a while. And we had a son at that time. Uh, but what I had to draw from at that time were artists and professors that I had known while I was in TCU. And I had worked at the, uh, what was the Fort Worth Art Museum, now at the uh, Modern Art Museum Fort Worth as a preparator. 
when I was in college, so I knew a little broader spectrum of artists around. So we started there and then, then probably didn't have enough artists that I wanted and you ask them if they know somebody that has a like-minded type of uh, artwork that they're producing and it kind of expanded from there. And then as we developed our own sense of self, I guess, and our audience, uh, there was nutrition and we tried to upgrade with artists that were more productive. Uh, I remember, well, as we fine-tuned our eye. Right. The first show we had by a known, very large name artist was Gene Davis. Uh, we'd gone to Washington, D.C., met him, and selected work, and that was very successful. Um, but then we were trying to get a mix of regional artists along with uh, bigger name artists. Yeah. And it, it really worked. Uh, I remember one of the biggest shows we did in this building early, early on was called Drawings Coast to Coast, and we had 44 artists from California and New York and big names, Saul Witt and Frankenthaler and Bill and it, it, it combined and, yeah. artists from here, yeah. or, you know, regional artists as well as artists from all over the country. known people. Because that's something we've always felt was important, was to, to show regional artists right next to, you know, some very internationally known artist and yeah. show that the work is equally as good in some cases if not better. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We always talk about Texas art as this sort of unique regional thing, but it really kind of expands beyond oh, yeah. uh, the region. Putting Texas in front of an artist's name uh, can usually come with this sort of caveat that it's, you know, something yeah. other, yeah, but it really is not. Well, and I think that that whole idea has changed with the internet and travel in the last 25, 30 years because even the regional artists have been all over the world and they're exposed to these other people and befriended them and are affected by them and vice versa. So Texas doesn't necessarily have its own genre now. Right. You can't, yeah, you can't look you can't at something put those labels. Distinct, but... Yeah, you can't pinpoint it. Yeah. yeah. So what was the gallery scene like back then? Um, I moved to Texas in the um, mid to late 80s, and I didn't really get into art until the mid-90s. So the, between the time you started and let's say, uh, the, the late 90s, what did the Fort Worth uh, art scene look like? How many galleries? What kind of shows were happening? I think when we started out, there were two galleries in the same center we were in, and then there were two or three others, so maybe a mix of six, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. And there, Number-wise, <clears throat> there were about the same number of galleries <laughs> then, as there are now. As there yeah. are now. And, and at times, there were maybe even more. Wow. And less. Now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's ebbed and flowed. It's no different than any other kind of retail business in that people want to try to get into the business and find out it's work. <laughs> yeah. You know, people don't just come in here to look at a pretty picture. Um, we're in a very, we're in a destination specific site, so we don't get any foot traffic per se. But um, the gallery openings then were extremely successful. I mean, a lot of people, uh, it had that party atmosphere like uh, I think most openings back then did. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's that, but you have to attract people and they have to see the art before they're going to buy it. Yeah. And you never know if you have 20 or 100 people in here, the one person that it's going to buy something or and then become a client, but you just have to keep promoting yourself and the artist to find those people. So over time, you compound you compound your audience uh, one by one. Basically, it's really interesting that our clients have become very good friends of ours. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. It's very uh, building that kind of relationship over the the years that you've been yeah. doing it. What percentage of the business would you say are repeat customers and um, versus people that just come up, you know, to an exhibition and 
Mm. That's hard to track, but I'd yeah. say it's probably higher than most people think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think business. it's I think it's the same as any other business. You you're trying to build trust with these people. Uh, you know, we don't try to hot box somebody and sell them a piece yeah. of art. We'll certainly sell it if they're interested, or we'll tell them the nuances of it. You know, but we don't say and try to upsell them necessarily. Yeah. Uh, we do that by merchandising or hanging the exhibitions and hanging the small things, large things, price variations. Uh, so people can kind of pick their spot they're comfortable with, yeah, and that's what we try to nurture. So for the day-to-day -day yeah. operations over the past few years or decades, um, what what do you think has contributed to your longevity um, selling art in this space over the years? Oh, Persistence. I think, yeah. <laughs> That, um, it's a combination yeah. of, of all those things. I think doing the art fairs, um, off-site shows we've done. Yeah, um, you have to bring in new artists from time to time um, without sacrificing the support of those that those artists that you have represented for a long time too, because. Yeah that's extremely important to maintain those those older existing relationships too and without getting so many artists that you just can't support all of them but but you have to bring in some new, some new fresh yeah. work from time to time too I'm trying to encapsulate everything that you've done here over the past 46 years into one interview and <laughs> It's probably not going to happen, but I, I definitely... have done here. Yeah. <laughs> we can't forget that. You know, uh, and I'm very grateful as an artist that doesn't have like a conventional practice and uh, multiple alter egos. And proposing something like what you're talking about, the, um, the Frank Art Smarter Thrift Art Gallery Enterprise, um, it's something that I don't think I would have felt comfortable bringing to another gallery. And it's partially because, uh, you know, I, I lived across the street, uh, I think it was 97 to 99. I lived directly, almost directly across the street from here. And I was still at community college and it was my first sort of regular art experience to come into this gallery to openings. Uh, there, I think there's even a picture of me and my daughter upstairs at one of the shows when she was like two years old. Mm -hmm. But it's that openness, that welcome neighborhood gallery feel that still has the international connection and uh, connection with uh, Texas artists that maybe gave me that, uh, uh, made me think that you wouldn't laugh the idea out of out of the space but we've also developed a good friendship over the years sure. yeah what are some of the other memories like that in this space shows that you've put together that have really just been beyond um work it's like you know this isn't just a business it's a labor of love uh, Better-minded people would have probably like <laughs> turned away from trying to make art a business. That's what years my ago. that's what our accountant says. <laughs> <laughs> so what what are some of the things that that it, memories of shows that keep that kept you going when you thought you might have? I would say the personality of the artist. Uh, we've always had the philosophy that we would only do business with people that we could get along with and, and really enjoy being around. And as well, as anybody knows, there are so many artists out there, there's no reason to deal with people that are very hard-headed and demonstrative about what they want versus uh, settling down a little bit. And this is a business, and yes, we're doing, we're very serious about it, but we don't need you to push us around. Right. We don't push them around. So we've developed these incredible friendships, like we've said, with these artists. And I think one of the most enjoyable things about it is, is A, we already like their work and they're here, but 
many times they'll stay with us at home when yeah, artists they're from out of town passing through or when they have an shows. exhibition here yeah. and and we love being around them. Uh, it really is a joy yeah. to have an exhibition for them. And I think that if you exude that uh, passion for what they do, we can sell it. I mean, we believe in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, if we have that artist versus somebody that's real pushy and hard to deal with, who are we going to push the hardest? Right. Yeah. That's a no-brainer. But when, when we've had shows that have been, you know, really successful over the years, obviously that's really exciting. Uh, when we've had the opportunity to work with museums with our artist, that's very rewarding. Yeah, and you you worked as an appraiser as well, Pam. right? Uh, Still tell do. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, um, I've been an appraiser for thirty years, a little over thirty years. I'm accredited by the American Society of Appraisers <coughs> and the International Society of Appraisers with senior designations from both associations. And I really enjoy doing that. Well, what's fun. one of the, uh, do you have a memorable thing that you've had to appraise that you were like surprised at the, the value of it, either on the high or the low end? There have been several over the years. Well, I guess one that comes to mind is someone brought in something that they had bought at a thrift store. And, I mean, these things actually do happen. And she didn't recognize who it was by. She knew it. She knew she really liked it, and she thought it was important. And the signature was very, you know, hard to read. But yeah. if you knew who it was, you would recognize the signature. And so it was an Ellsworth Kelly. Oh my God. It, it was a print, but it was a, a signed and numbered print. print. It was yeah. about an, what, eight foot long yeah. piece, I guess. She had bought it for, I think, $175. And at the time, it was worth 25000 Wow. And I've appraised it for her since. And. Gosh, the last time I appraised it, I think it was worth 45000 maybe. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I keep telling her, I'll be glad to give her 200 for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gorgeous piece. Just gorgeous. And then she gets a lot of the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm proud to say that I never brought you any one of my thrift store finds. Uh, <laughs> so, tell me specifically the nature of your announcement. Are you, would you consider what you're doing retirement or are you? I would, I would consider it a retirement. That will depend on if Peter needs any assistance or advice or anything like that. I, you know, live three blocks from here. I've got a phone, so he's always welcome to call me. Uh, if he doesn't, that's fine. But he's very capable and we were, so ecstatic when he and J.W. Wilson approached okay. us. Will the name remain the same? Yes. And uh, who are the people involved? It's, it's um, primarily Peeler Howell and J.W. Wilson. They are the two that, that approached us okay. That's, with that... interest in buying the gallery. And Peeler has worked here. He had worked for us for three and a half years before. Yeah. So he knew how confused we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what is that what was that conversation like? I mean uh, They were very professional about it. They set up a meeting with us, um uh, and And we didn't know what the meeting was. We didn't was know for. what it was about, said, which you okay. know <laughs> Oh, you're quitting? <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> we we didn't. Uh but they they said they were interested in buying the gallery. Were we interested? And of course we've been thinking about our exit strategy for a few years, and we had another young lady we had hoped would buy it years ago, uh, and she'd worked for, for us for quite a while, and she decided this wasn't what she wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, we knew that Peeler was very competent. Although we're still very interested in it, we had done a lot of things that, you know, we kind of felt like we were repeating ourselves all the time. Yeah. And. I guess the fervor or, or enthusiasm for some of that stuff had 
it wasn't what it was 40 years ago, obviously. But the fact that we're older, we also saw that this younger generation of gallerists were doing different things and different audience. A lot of our audience is, is very old yeah. uh, or passed away, and we needed to, uh, you know, get some new blood and new audience. My name is Peeler Howell. I am part of Fort Worth Contemporary Art Partners. Uh, we've recently purchased uh, William Campbell Contemporary Art and Gallery One Frames. What made you want to <laughs> own a gallery? Well, that's a good question. Um, I had always been interested in art. I studied art at TCU Studio Art. And um, really my mom probably said it the best when, I, when we were talking about making this purchase here. She said, that's what you've always wanted to do. And I, I think part of me had kind of forgotten that, but that's true. I mean, it really is, where, where, wherever we were, we traveled a lot when I was a child and you know we were in our galleries all the time. And I remember now thinking like, that would be a really great job you know, to be in the gallery all the time and make it your business. So there was some serendipity involved, really, because you know, Bill and Pam were, were looking for a gallery assistant at that time, and um, it really just it really just worked out yeah. well. Um, it's really not much more complicated than that. I thought, well, where's the best? What's the best gallery in town? I might as well start there. So I came I came to William Campbell. J W and I were talking. We went to get a cup of coffee, and we're kind of talking about what was going on and. Our mutual interest still and he knew that I was working here of course and um, I brought it up to him that you know there is no real exit strategy as Bill said for the gallery there's and you know there's a bunch of work to do yeah. whether the gallery closes or not so I mean do you think there's an opportunity for us would you be interested in maybe it's trying to put some idea together about how we could continue on at, at William Campbell Contemporary Art and he was very enthusiastic I think he had always wanted to be a part of this gallery in particular yeah uh, galleries in general um, but you know this one in particular it's sort of the standard really of, uh, of galleries in Fort Worth certainly I think and so he was we just started like that you know over a cup of coffee and it was like, it basically, when can we talk to Bill and Pam, and do you think they'll be fine? And so, well, you know, let's, I think so. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't just out of nowhere. I mean, I, yeah. we had talked about the future of the gallery here and taking over at some point, but hadn't really worked out the details much further than that. So that was kind of the genesis of how that started. And like Bill and Pam said, we just met in the office and told them what we were thinking and everybody was on board and so then we started working out the formalities, the legal stuff. And so when they offered that, we jumped at the chance. Are you gonna miss it? Of course. Oh sure. Of course. But you know, we're still in contact with all the artists and like I said, we've become very good friends and we plan on visiting them when we're wherever they live and uh, seeing them around here. So we're not going to be out of it. We personally called every one of our artists yes. and Spoke told them what was happening yeah. and had lengthy conversations with every one of them. And they, every single one is very supportive and looking forward to working with Peeler. Yeah. So. And of course they all know Peeler. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they've worked with him for over three years already. Well, you couldn't hope for a better yeah. kind of transition than exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. It's been very nice. Because we still love the business, and of we course. really thought we would just keep working until we couldn't anymore, and then we would just close the doors. Well, I think, too, So we're thrilled that it's going to continue. Yeah, the COVID crisis um, made me think about a lot of things because all the gallerists, you know, are spinning trying to think, how do we evolve out of this, or will we survive this? So you have to reinvent yourself. Yeah. And who better to do it than two young people that know the business uh, and are younger and have new ideas. They know how the old system worked, uh, which they, I assume, will incorporate that into the new business. But they've got to come up with this new idea of, of how to survive this. And I think that they've got a lot of good ideas. 
big shoes to fill. Yes, indeed. <laughs> that's true. I, I was listening to Bill and Pam just now and thinking about that too. I think that's what you want though, because that's a good kind of pressure to have. You know, you inherited something that's very special to a lot of people and I don't, you certainly can't be casual with it. I think you have to be sensitive and serious and you can't be cavalier about, you know, how important the, this institution really is. So I, that was a big driver for us. I mean, to, to think like we have a chance to inherit this, this great business and this great scene and, and uh, these great artists. And so we took it, you know, seriously. Well, we're looking I, forward to the future yeah, of the gallery. Yeah, we think they'll do great. I wonder what it will feel like to you the first time that the next show happens and you come in just as guests. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I do no, too. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> but see, that until, until the COVID thing's over, it's not going to be like the old yeah. days. It's exactly. just not. And uh, so it may be a while before we see that. Yeah, yeah things have changed so yeah. dramatically in just yeah. a few short months. It's really great to uh, get this opportunity to have you um, talk about uh, your baby, your labor <laughs> of love. And uh, I think it's something that the next audience that comes into the gallery can, can appreciate. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we think we'll be happy. <laughs> hey, you live three blocks down. You can always buy it back. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we no. may have to pass on that one. <laughs> well, Bill we think Pat. Peeler will be able to handle it yeah, very well. Very well. <laughs> Bill and Pam Campbell, thank you so much for the opportunity to chat with you and. Um, What's, what's actually, what's next? What's happening? What are you doing immediately after? You're I'm trying to get all of my office that is in boxes on our dining room table cleared <laughs> off. <laughs> so just regular stuff. Yeah. I'm working on, she a, does on a big appraisal. So I'm continuing that. And yeah. yeah. Staying yeah. busy with that. Yeah. The art yeah. never ends. Yeah. yeah. And that's great. We love it. Yeah. It's in our blood. <laughs> Well, thank you both so much for taking the time. And I mean, okay, thank you, thank you Christopher. Mm -hmm.